ashes and dust are all that remain we're hopeful the world still come from my veins on this altar and on this road you have called me from my home the weight I
down beneath me Moving like a hurricane Can you hear my breathing? I've waited in a war with my own doubts. Though my voice is silent, still my hands are reaching out. Kia ora tātou katoa, uh, kua hui mai ki roto i te hahi nei. Uh, good to see you all this morning. Uh, we're going to get into some time of praise and worship, but, but before we do, I am going to open up from the Word of God. And, and just to say, this is a scripture that we as a youth community have been focused on for the week, and um, I just feel too that it's a scripture that we can all benefit from. And it says here in John 13, 34 to 35, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this all will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. And I love this scripture because often we can be so focused and 
we come to church and we lift up our voices and praise and worship and we can be so focused on our uh, vertical relationship with God. And what often drops is our horizontal connections, our horizontal relationships with each other. And you know what? He said, and this is how people will know that you are my disciples, is when you love one another. So not only we come in here and we lift up our voices of praise and show our worship and adoration to our Lord Jesus Christ, the King of kings and Lord of lords, but actually something needs to be deposited in our hearts as we worship Him. If we leave this place and we're not transformed and we go back home and we're not speaking with love to our whanau, if we're not speaking with love to those that are around us, and if we're just getting engaged in in gossip, and, and then we just revert back to the ways that we were a part of before we came to church, then our worship is in vain. And I'm saying this because I've been in the church now for so many times. I've I've came came here to worship and and you know you can come here and worship. It's a good place to worship. But when I come into this place and worship now, God God has really spoken to me about not just worshiping Him but also loving those that are around us. And uh, we can do that this morning. And why don't you, as we worship Him this morning, ask the Lord, please deposit something within my spirit. Stir me up inside. And maybe there may be people in your life that you have become disconnected with. And maybe you've come into this place harboring unforgiveness. But I want to say this, Jesus died for our sins. And it was the greatest transaction ever made on our behalf for our redemption and salvation. Why don't we be upstanding as we commit this time to Him? And I want you to leave today being challenged, going home, sharing love, speaking words of life to each other. Lord Father, Lord, we come here, Lord God, not just to worship you, Lord Father, and remember the price that was paid on Calvary for our sins, Lord Father. Lord, I pray, Lord God, that you'll transform us, Lord Father, from the inside out, Lord Father, that the love that we have for you will also be the love that we demonstrate to others because you say in your word, Lord Father, that when we do this, we become your disciples, Lord Father, and people see that. And Lord, we want to be a light in the communities that we are part of, in the, in the workplaces we are part of, in the schools that we are part of, Lord Father, shining your light, shining your love, Lord Father. Lord, we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory this morning. In Jesus' mighty name, and everyone said, Amen. Amen. The first lyrics to this song is, I cast my mind to Calvary. So let's cast it there. Where our sin was paid for. Let's sing. I cast my mind to Calvary. Where Jesus bled and died for me. I see. His hands, His feet, my Savior on that cursed tree. His body bound. His body bound and drenched in tears. They laid Him down in Joseph's tomb. Sealed by heavy stone, Messiah still and all alone. Oh, praise the name.
sung for a while
outpouring, Holy Spirit. Let your cloud come, Lord. Declare in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We lift up our praise to you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Holy, 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 holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy are you, Jesus. We worship you here, Lord. The price you paid. Holy is your name. Holy is your name, Lord. Lift holy hands, church. He paid that price so you can lift them. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Worthy is he to be praised. Worthy is the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, O my soul.
found I know nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you that blood is available to us. The power of that blood, Lord God, to forgive sins and to wash us clean from unrighteousness. We bless you today. Thank you again for your blood that was shed for us on the cross of Calvary that has come down, Lord God, from the centuries to touch our lives and wash our lives, Lord God. Redeem us, Lord God, from destruction and hell in the grave and given us hope Jesus Christ in us, the hope of glory. We thank you today. We thank you for each other. Thank you for the opportunity that we can come together to worship you. Pray for every family that is represented in this place this morning. And Lord, that our lives will be touched by the grace and the power of our God. We give you honor today. You're a great God. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name and everyone say amen. amen. Say hello to somebody, then take your seats. Hallelujah. Oh, that's not even your dream. <laughs> Hallelujah. Look at that fellow. Fantastic. You can find your seats again. Just a reminder that following the service this morning, we will have some uh, refreshments out in the lounge. That's through the back doors there to the left. To us. If there was someone you didn't quite get to catch up with, please do grab them following the service. Take them out for a cuppa. Hallelujah. But right now we're going to take up the offering. If I could have the ushers come. Thank you, Jesus. Mm-hmm. Let's pray. Our loving God, we thank you this morning. What a privilege it is to be together, Lord God, in this place with each other and with you. Lord, your presence is here ministering to us. And even as we've spent this time in worship, Lord God, you have been faithful to meet with your people. And we are blessed, Father. We are so blessed. Lord, this morning as we give, Lord, this offering is an extension of our worship. Lord, we love you. And we want to see others come to know Jesus just as we have. So Lord, bless the gift and the giver. This offering will go to the extension of your kingdom. In your wonderful name we pray. Amen. Wonderful. Just as the bags are being passed around, I have a few notices. So hopefully you've got your weekly bulletin. This is your permission to whip it out. Pull it out and have a look. We've got a number of things that are coming up in the life of the church that we want to highlight for you. Uh, Some exciting stuff. We also want to welcome everyone who's watching via live stream this morning. Welcome to church. Pray you're blessed by the time of worship. You can find our bulletin through the church website, which is www.fcc.net.nz. But here's a few things that we want to highlight. Tonight, of course, is our AGM. We've been promoting that for the last month or so. So tonight at 6 o'clock, the doors are open about 5.30, but come down for 6 o'clock start, and we'll go through our general business. Uh, and if you didn't get your report, well, I think it's actually a bit too late now if you, didn't want to, if you wanted to view the reports beforehand. There's no one in the office who can send those to you. But uh, just come along anyway, and uh, we will go through that. But just so you're aware, that is at 6 p.m. tonight. I also want to announce with that that we will be launching our brand new website this after uh, this evening as we do the AGM. Uh, really excited about doing that, and websites needed a bit of an upgrade for a while. 
uh, it's still the same address and everything, so nothing changes there, but we've integrated our live streams into the main church website. You don't have to go somewhere else for it anymore. There'll be uh, a lot more events on there, and you'll be able to track some different things. So we'll launch that during the AGM, so uh, come along tonight, and you'll find out more about that. If you don't come, well, you'll just have to check it out probably, I don't know, sometime after 7 o'clock, I'm guessing, something like that. But um, you can tune in and have a look at that. But that will be going live uh, tonight. Uh, this coming Wednesday, we have our next small groups all in. That means that your small group, instead of gathering at your homes, will be gathering here at the church on Wednesday night, 7 p.m. We're going to have some time of worship, some prayer, and some devotion. So do come along. It'll be a great evening. Uh, we always look forward to these gatherings. We've had about three, I think, this year so far. And they've been powerful evenings of just coming together as a church family, praying, spending time together. And so um, do join us for that. That's this coming Wednesday. Sandra King, our long-term, uh, long-time missionary uh, member of this church, uh, will be with us in the uh, coming month. Um, so on a Wednesday night on the 16th of August at 7 p.m., uh, she will be here ministering uh, for many, many years. Sandra was a, uh, ran an orphanage in Asia, and uh, it was amazing ministry where they would take uh, unwanted children and, and bring them up and release them into other families and things. Uh, she's been before, but come and hear her story. It'll inspire you. It'll bless you. It'll stir your own faith. Uh, perhaps that's another evening where your small group could come along to that instead. It's on a, a Wednesday night at 7 p.m., so you could always bring your small group along to hear Sandra, uh, but you will be blessed, so take note of that as well. Also, I want to highlight the Supernatural Workshop. We have, for the first time ever, Pastor David Peters coming to visit us. He's from Auckland. We'll be ministering at the Leaders Paper Tea on the Friday night, but on the Saturday, uh, which is on the 19th of August, uh, he will be running a supernatural workshop uh, covering areas from the role of the Holy Spirit to uh, moving in the prophetic and also uh, releasing healing, praying for healing. So there'll be a, a range of different topics within that time. Uh, you need to know it's starting at about 9.30 in the morning and will wrap up around 3 p.m. So it's a good chunk of the day, but you will be blessed and it will empower your own Christian walk. So do uh, make a note of it. Come along. Uh, you can also go to our Facebook page, which has been updated with pretty much every event till the end of the year. So if you want to know what's happening in the life of the church, you can go there as well. That's all from me this morning. Why don't we give our senior pastor a great hand? But uh, uh, we have a baby to dedicate. If you came to the dedication, uh, do come up, please. And uh, where is that, Jacob? Come on. This is the one. For somebody very small, you're breeding a lot of giants. <laughs> Come on. Jake. Well, why don't you guys have a church of your own? <laughs> it's wonderful to see everybody come. It must be a a blessing to uh, dedicate another one to the Lord. Um, God is a generational God, and we dwell in Him from generation to generation. This one's name is Isabel. Isabel? What's, the name, what's the meaning of the name of your daughter? <laughs> God's promise. It's mean, it means... Pledged to God or God's oath, which is God's promise. God has two things, his word and his oath. His word gives us the promise, and then he adds his oath to it just to uh, tell us that he means business. He promises us with his word, then he adds his oath to it. This one is God's oath, pledged to the Lord. And uh, look at these ones that till the ground for her to grow. And we pray that to that end, that she will grow in the grounds that you have plowed. Look at that. You're worshiping God already. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. 
lifting up your hands as the evening sacrifice. So when you lift up your hands, you don't just lift up your hands because others lift up their hands. It's a sacrifice, like the evening sacrifice in the days of old when you lift your hands, and behind those hands is the throne of God. Hallelujah. When Moses lifted up his hands, the battle was won because behind those hands, you're fascinated with me, eh? <laughs> look at that, look at that, yeah. Who's the white-headed fellow? Is that your papa? Hey. Eh? But uh, she's blessed of all his uh, aunties and uncles and grandma and grandpa and parents and uh, uh, to just uh, see her grow in the grace of God, pledged to the Lord, God's oath. Jacob, who's this? Yeah, your sister? Yeah. <laughs> Let's just pray. Father, we thank you for uh, these two. Thank you for the blessing they have been, not only to their families, but, Lord, to us as a church. And as we dedicate this jewel that you have given to them, this second fruit of their marriage, of their womb, we pray, dear God, that your promises that are yes and are men will come to pass in the life of this young girl, that as she grows, she will know, Lord God, your grace, she will know your love. She will know the blessing of God that makes rich and adds no sorrow. That... Uh, Lord, bless her family, her grandparents, her aunties and uncles, her cousins, her parents. And Father, we pray that, Lord, she will be greatly blessed, that she will grow in a fertile soil, plowed by generations that love you. And so, Father, we dedicate Isabel Ruth Larson to you that your will will be done in her life. She'll be set apart for holy purposes. We give you honor today. You're a great God. In Jesus' name, and everyone say, Amen. 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 Isabel, Ruth, last. What a great, Ruth, goodness me, that's the, the girl that's more than seven boys. Say, <laughs> hey, give them a great hand. Well, I think, you, I think you lost your baby for a few moments. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Well, I'm not going to be here next week. I'm speaking at a conference in Auckland on evangelism, so I'll be there because the conference finishes on Saturday night, so I'll be there on Sunday morning. So, uh, but uh, in that sense, I better pray for, for my son and his wife. They're going to Qatar, so if they come with their kids, we'll pray for them. Because their last Sunday is next Sunday, but this is my last Sunday here before they go. Is that all right? Now, why anybody will want to go to Qatar from Wanganui? <laughs> you need faith to go to Qatar. <laughs> so if they have any friends or any families around here, they can come and stand with them. If they don't, then well, I'll just pray for them. <laughs> come on. Going to Qatar to teach and to practice how to put that burqa on. And uh, so Faith won't be able to see Savannah's face in public. <laughs> Hallelujah. Dad, can you pray for them? Hallelujah. According to your purpose, your plan. Now they decided to, to go overseas. Thank you for the gifting that you planted in their, their lives. Use them as a gift to other people. Whatever they're going to do there, that whatever subject, whatever things that you plant in their lives, they're going to dish out 
let the anointing of the, of the Holy Spirit be upon them. What they do, what they say, what they, what they, every action they do, it will be attracted people unto you so that your name of God, God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit may be glorified. Be with them in everything they do. Materialistic, mentally, spiritually, be with them, Father. Guide them, keep them safe in every way because the world is in a funny, funny situation. So we commit them unto you. Be with them from today. They're going to leave New Zealand until they reach their destination. If they're going to come back, bring them back safely. If Jesus tarry. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. CJ, you want to pray for them? <laughs> They're your friends. <laughs> Don't swear. Just, just pray. <laughs> <laughs> Dear Lord Father, I pray for uh, Faith and Seb and their Sarah family. Lord, I just pray that you just um, bless them as they go to Qatar, Lord Father. Um, even though there might be reasons we don't understand why they go over there, Lord Father, I know there's a purpose for them. And I just pray that you just continue to bless them and keep them safe and keep their daughters uh, healthy and get a good education over there, Lord Father, and that, that they won't forget you while they're over there, Lord Jesus. And um, yeah, I just pray that you just continue to prosper in their lives. And we thank you for this opportunity to um, send them off. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. You were going to be a missionary, weren't you? <laughs> ah, so we, I'm still waiting, still waiting. So get married, get married, and go on the mission field. Let me pray. I'll pray for my son. <laughs> All right, reach out your hand. Father, we thank you for your goodness. We bless them as they go that they will know your blessing as they go out and come in. And Lord, as a church, as a congregation, we release them, Lord God, into your care. We commit them, Lord God, to the care of the God of heaven and earth, that, Lord, that they will know, Lord God, your goodness. May they run into you in Qatar when moments are difficult. May they collide with you. May, you, may they know, Lord God, that you care for them and, and love them. And, uh, Lord, we pray your blessing upon them. Do them good, Father, we pray. And everyone say, amen. amen, amen, amen. Well, give them a hand. <laughs> you should pray more often, CJ, in church. Hallelujah. The children can go. <coughs> As a church, we are going on a two-week fast starting tomorrow. You can break your fast in the evening, but uh, pray for the coming visit of uh, uh, David and Greta. And uh, that our church, the church will be prepared. It will be good soil. And the Word of God can fall into. God normally put three things together. I said, when you pray, when you give, and when you fast. So the whole thing is together. It's not if you pray or if you fast. God wants us to uh, pray, fast, and give. Not just the giving of our finances, but the giving of our love the giving of our grace to others, and giving them opportunities to be able to grow in the favor and the goodness of God. So that will be the next two weeks. And uh, if you want to fast from breakfast to breakfast, that will be fine. If you are not well and need to eat, please don't fast. Eat. Now, that's an excuse for everybody now to eat. Don't eat, okay? <laughs> But uh, if you've got a medical condition then, uh, and you need to eat, then please do eat. But for the rest of us, fast and have one meal a day for the next 14 days. Some of us, like me, need to fast, lose some weight. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you okay? If you have a look at Hebrews chapter 4, we'll start there.
And uh, just welcome to uh, Gavin and Sandy's family, their children that have come for the dedication. And uh, next time you come, you can stay, okay? We miss you guys. Hallelujah. Thank God for heaven. We're never going to say goodbye again. <laughs> You'll get sick of me because I'll be living right next to you. <laughs> Hallelujah. We've been talking for the benefit of those that are here for the first time. Just reiterate some of our steps so that you can be on the same page. And then we'll carry on. Hallelujah. By the way, anybody here for the first, a very first time? Anybody for the very first time? They're here for the first. Can you stand to your feet so we can just applaud you guys? God bless you. Thank you for joining us. We pray that uh, you will be blessed. We've been talking about uh, the warnings from uh, the Bible, some of them. The Bible has much to warn us about. The book of Proverbs primarily are warnings and instructions for the life of a young man, a young woman, and a family. It warns young people. It warns even kings. And tells the king what to do and what not to do. So we've been talking a little bit about that and about these warnings that God gives us. And uh, the last time we spoke, we spoke about a warning from the book of Hebrews chapter 3 going on to chapter 4. So we'll, we'll look at that and then uh, we'll carry on. It says uh, in chapter 3 and verse 12, Beware, brethren, that there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief departing from the living God. That your heart can be unbelieving, and the result of the unbelief is that you will depart from the living God. And there are many things that God wants to bless us with, but He doesn't. And many times we wonder, why doesn't He do it? I ask Him for this and nothing happens. There are many things that God will withhold. He won't give them to you because there are actions and things that we have to activate and do. The Bible tells us that in the beginning, God withheld the rain. It didn't rain because there was no man to till the ground. There was no one willing to till the ground, so God withheld the rain. There are many things like that that God expects us to do certain things before he releases blessings and promises to us. He tells the prophet Hosea, tell my people to break up the fallow ground. It's time to seek the Lord until he comes and rains righteousness over us. So the reign of righteousness is withheld. Until you and I break up the fallow grounds. What is fallow grounds? It's grounds that have been fruitful before, but now lying in fallow. And the Bible says, if you break up the fallow ground, then God will come and rain righteousness. But until you break up that ground, God won't release a rain of righteousness. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Who are those? God's people. Do they have wicked ways? Yes. Sometimes they have an evil heart of unbelief. And God says, if my people, if my church, if the born again believers will humble themselves and 
pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I'll hear from heaven. I'll forgive their sins and heal. So the healing of the land is withheld. The land is not healed until certain things that we have to do are done. So our land has not been healed. We are still fighting about the treaty. We are talking about those elements. And many times we talk through a hole in our head because we have no understanding of what a treaty is. But until we do our stuff and do our part, the land will not be healed. It's withheld. So, many of the promises of God don't come to pass in our lives, even though he that promises is faithful. Are you okay? That's why the Bible warns us that if you have an evil heart of unbelief, sooner or later, you're going to depart from the living God. Whatever you have will be dead. He won't be alive. You'll depart from life that has life, living. You will still live, but there'll be no living. Do you know what, do you know what I mean? It's like the, the man that came to Jesus when Jesus came down from the mountain of transfiguration. And there was a kerfuffle. Everybody was there. The disciples were there. Pharisees were there. The crowd was there. And what's was going on. And the man came over and he said, I brought my son to your disciples and they could not cast out the devil. And then Jesus said, how long do I have to be with you before you believe? So the reason the devil didn't go is because of Unbelief, there was no faith. And then Jesus said, everything and anything is possible to anyone, Parker, Samoan, Tokelauan, Korean, anyone who has faith. Faith has no color. Faith has no position. A little guy can have faith, an old guy can have faith. A son can have faith. A father can have faith. A son can have faith and a father don't have faith. Because faith is colorless. It has no particular position in the order of society. And yet it's a most powerful thing. Jesus said, if you believe, you can have anything that you want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. God is Jehovah Jireh. Whatever you need is provided. Whatever you want is provided. Because God is Jehovah Jireh. And God is not Jehovah Jireh to just a certain group in society. God is Jehovah Jireh to anybody who knows how to worship and live by faith. Hallelujah. Are you okay? So, Jesus said, if you believe, the man said, I believe, but help my unbelief. So, you can actually believe and unbelieve at the same time. I believe, but help my unbelief. And he cast out the devil, and the boy was, fell over dead. He said, he's all right, picked him up, and he went home whole. That's good English, went home whole. <laughs> Poetic, went home whole. Hallelujah. And unbelief can rob us of the best that God has to give. Now, I don't like using the word best. Because if there's a word best, then that means God can be less than best. But God is good all the time. That's why when the, the guy said, good, good, good rabbi, Jesus said, 
Are you saying I'm God? Only God is good. Are you saying I'm God? So I don't like using better and best when it comes to the promises of God because it means that there are classes in, no, 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 no. God loves the, the world. The whole world. The whole world. The millionaires, the billionaires, the nanonaires. <laughs> God loves the whole world. And he gave his son for the whole world. So there's no classes of his love. But we make it classy because many of us don't believe. And then you say, how come it always happens to him? There's a huge difference. He believes you don't. How close can you, can you walk with God? Well, how close do you want to walk with God? It's up to you. The Bible says that Jesus loved John more than any other disciple. Now, right there you think, he's discriminating. John is Samoan and the rest of the disciples are Europeans. <laughs> no, 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 no. Who decided Jesus was going to love John more than anybody else? John. John. John just made that decision. I'm going to be so close to him that he's going to, uh, he can't help himself but love me. But it wasn't a decision made by Jesus. It was a decision made by John. When you go to hell, guess what? It's your decision. God does not want you to go to hell. God did not make hell for you. But someone will go to hell on roller skates. And they'll try and blame God. Nah, 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 nah. If you go to hell, it's your decision. If you go to heaven, it's your decision. How close to God you walk is your decision. Hallelujah. Are you guys all right? And I said last week, there are many people who are now atheists that used to walk with God. Because they walk with God, they, they, they believe God a certain way, but uh, they don't. They ask God for things, and then. But there are things God will withhold because of His mercy. Hallelujah. But Jesus loved John more than Peter, even though he walked with Peter. I mean, Peter was... One of those guys is always uh, putting his feet in his mouth to change his shoes. <laughs> they came to Caesarea Philippi and he said, who do they say I am? And Peter said, you're the Christ, you're the son of the living God. Blessed art thou, Simon by Jonah. Flesh and blood did not show you that. It wasn't Pastor Eli that showed you that. It's not because he went to church that, that you got that. You got that by revelation of my Father in heaven. And then a few verses down the line, she said, I'm going to be handed over to the hands of sinful men. And Peter said, nothing like that will ever happen. You know what Jesus said? Get behind me, Satan. The same guy. One moment he heard from God. The next moment he's an ambassador of hell. Get behind me, Satan. How do you like your friends to tell you that your name is Satan? That same Peter walked with God, hallelujah, on the day of Pentecost, it was Peter that preached, but Jesus loved John more than the guy that preached on the day of Pentecost. Whose decision? John's. Peter could have been in the same boat, but he wasn't that close to Jesus. So when they ask, who's going to betray you? Well, Peter asked you know who Peter asked? He asked John. John. John's not Jesus. John's not going to be betrayed. But Peter knew that Jesus won't tell him. So he asked John. John. And then John asked Jesus. Jesus told John. And John told Peter. <laughs> How close you are to God it's not your pastor's decision. It's yours. 
Now, some people so want the blessing of God, but they don't want to do what they're supposed to do. Are you all right? He said, anything is possible to him that believes. And the warning to us is, when we have a spirit of unbelief, the Bible says it's evil. Are you okay? So, let's preach then for today. Well, this is today's message, okay? What I said before was just a recap of where we've come from. Now, you know the journey from Egypt. Egypt is a type of the world, and the promised land is a type, is a type of where we are heading. And in a sense it is, in a sense it's not. Because in the promised land, there is milk and honey, so that's a promise, but there are enemies. In heaven, there are no enemies. But it's still a picture of this journey with God. So they were delivered from Egypt after 400 year prayer meeting. Now they either can't pray or God was deaf. They prayed 400 years, and the answer to the prayer was withheld. Even though they prayed, the answer was withheld until God found Moses. And when Moses was discovered, they were released from Egypt overnight. That's amazing. She said, on the 10th day of this month, prepare a lamb. If you can't find a good one, Go to Ratana, there's some ewes there and lambs. Yeah. Otherwise, go to a, a Waitotura Valley or go and ask Jack Larson to give you a lamb. <laughs> you keep the lamb for four days and you go through the lamb to see that the lamb has no blemish. And on the 14th day in the evening, you cut the throat of that lamb. Now, that's... That seems to be a uh, matter of fact, but it's not. Can you imagine if you've got a pet lamb and your children play with the lamb? Morning, night, they get up at night and they look for and it's there. They put the lamb inside their, their, their mosquito net. And then on the 14th day, dad comes over and... Pow, they're going to hate that man. Why? Because it has to be a sacrifice. It has to be a sacrifice. Is there anything better than sacrifice? Obedience. Obedience. So right, right there. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart, as in the rebellion today. So, Obedience is better than sacrifice. And yet they sacrificed the lamb and they were delivered out of Egypt. They walked through the Red Sea. Now, have you ever tried walking through a sea? That's glorious. Amazing. So they had the, the blood on the doorpost. We sang about that. The waters of uh, the Red Sea and the guiding of the Holy Ghost. The pillar of fire by night and the pillar of cloud by day. So that's salvation. The witness of the blood, the water, and the spirit. That's salvation. That's our salvation we know now. We are saved by the blood, the waters of baptism, and the infilling of the, the Holy Ghost. That's what we've got. So they had that in type. But to them it was a physical thing because it was physical blood. They ate a physical lamb. They roasted it. And they had some uh, lamb rack. And then they walked through the... So it was glorious. But I want you for us, because on the day that they were saved, every firstborn of Egypt died. Now that's phenomenal. From the firstborn of the king to the firstborn of the cat. 
and everything in between died in one night. Why? Because there was no redemption for them because they were unclean. But we talked about that last week. But this is what I want to say. You can be saved by the blood and still live in Egypt. And there are many Christians I know who are saved by the blood of Jesus Christ but still live in Egypt. They are not free. They're doing their own thing. They think they are free, but they are not. And then there are Christians who live in the wilderness. They came out, crossed the Red Sea. Now they're in the wilderness. And the wilderness is miraculous. They drank from a, a rock. They ate pancakes from heaven every morning. Hello? They did. They go out there and pick up the manna and they come home. And the amazing thing is the young people will pick up so many sacks. The old people, when they get home, he's got no more than she has. Everyone is equal in God. So you can actually live here. This place is miraculous. There's a miracle every day. The heavens are open every day. The manna fell, falls every day. They drink from a, a, a river that comes from a rock. That's amazing. It's amazing to me they never drowned. He said, what do you mean? Well, let me ask you a question. If you all camp in one place, how much water do you need? There's about three million of them. So three million people camping in one place. It's probably a camp between here and Palmerston North. And they all have to drink from that rock. How huge is that river? Because they have to drink and then they have to wash. And some of them had to need, need a wash twice a day. <laughs> they wash their clothes, they wash their bodies. And they drink and they cook. How much water came out of the rock? See, we just read that and never think about stuff. That was glorious and miraculous. No wonder God was angry with them. Because having seen all that, they still did not believe. So you can live here. You can live here in Egypt, or you can live here in the wilderness, or you can go over across another river called the River Jordan, and live in the land that is flowing with milk and honey. Now where are you living? Where's your family living? There, here, or there? Now the Bible says this. It's amazing. The promises of God are yes and amen in Christ by, if you don't get involved, if you don't get in, all the promises of God don't mean nothing. You get absolutely nothing. Even though they are yes and yes, which means it's a double yes, yes and amen. In Christ, and you are in Christ, everyone is in Christ, is a new creation, all things are part. Everything Every promise is yes and amen in Christ by us. We have to get in and get ourselves involved. Now, heaven is prepared, but unless you get in, you are going to hell on roller skates. And hell is not a picnic. And hell is not suffering for just three days. Hell is suffering eternally. But the greatest punishment of hell is that you're going to be separated from the presence of the one that loved you and gave himself for you. So the warning is, it's in chapter 4, verse 1. Therefore, since a promise remains, there's a promise that remains of entering his rest, 
Let us be afraid. Why? Why be afraid? You thought to be afraid. Oh no, the man will fall or fall on my. I thought to be afraid. Oh, yeah. That's that's in heavenly language. So I'll explain. That was a message in tongues. I'll explain that now. <laughs> it means a promise left unto us. It says, "Let us be afraid, because." Even though the promiser is faithful, he is faithful who promised. And even though the promises are yes and amen in Christ, and the one that promises faithful, it will profit you nothing. Unless you get yourself involved. And the Bible tells us, hey, you need to be afraid. God has not given us a spirit of fear. <laughs> I know. But the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. And the Bible tells us, if you're living like a worm, when you should live like a king, then let us fear, lest a promise left unto us of entering his rest, we will come short of it. So have a look at Second Peter. If you go right from Hebrews, you go past James, and then come to 2 Peter. I'll read from verse 2, and then I, I think I'll close. I'll wind down. Grace and peace be multiplied. Now, here's an amazing thing. Entering his rest. Grace and peace can actually be multiplied. There are people looking for peace, even in the church. But grace and peace can be multiplied. You want multiplication of peace? You want multiplication of grace? Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, as His divine power has given to us half the things, all things. He's given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of Him who call us by glory and virtue. He said, all things that pertain to your life and how to live godly is already presented. But it'll profit you nothing unless you get yourself involved. In verse uh, 4, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises. A promise left to us of entering. Great and precious promises that through these, through these promises, you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. You can actually be, he says, you can partake of the divine nature. Now, I said to you a few weeks, a few months ago, I don't like preaching from that verse. It's too far from your mind. It says you can actually be a partaker of his nature. You can be a partaker of his nature. You can be a partaker of his nature. After all, you're made in his, his image. And you can be a partaker of the divine nature of God because he has given us exceedingly great and precious promises. So the question is, are you living there or living here or living there? If you're here, can you do me a favor? Can you leave here and come and live here? Maybe you can't go from there to there, but at least go from there to here. Or you can go from here to here. If you've been living here all your life, can you please do me a favor and go do yourself a favor? Do yourself a favor. Leave here 
and come and live here. I preach at a, a church in Brisbane, and uh, we walked in. The pastor was already preaching. He saw us coming and said, oh, the old man is here. He's going to preach. And, and, and so he got down, and I went up and preached, and he, he was saying to a, saying to a pastor here, the old guy got up. You know what the elders of the church said? He shifted the gear from two to six. All in one go. Pshaw. Can you shift your gear from here? Can you at least shift here? And live here in the miraculous where you see the guidance of God, the provision. But this is not the God's best. You can only have supply for one day here. You need to move from here to here. But for you who's not saved, why don't you just get the blood that is here and get yourself saved? Just simple. But, uh, no, 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 but. You want to see the promised land and still live here. You can't live in two places at once. So don't ask God stupid question when you're still living here. Well, I want to know what. No, 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 no. Just start. Just start. Start. And then see what happens. But start and don't ask God about the destination before you start. So, if you're here, and maybe those are your questions. But because your questions are there, you've never started. I like what, uh, I think it was Reinhard Bonnke who said, you're drowning and I'm throwing you a rope. And he said, I'm not going to catch you a rope until you answer my questions. How stupid can you be and still live? Grab the rope first. Ask the questions after, but grab the rope. If you're here today, God 2,000 years ago threw us a lifeline. Many of us have rejected that. But if you're here today, you want to grab hold of the lifeline. What a tremendous day to say, Jesus, this is me. Help me. If that is you, you do me a favor. Can you get out of your seat and come and stand here? Because I love to lead you to know the Lord. You might never have another opportunity. You never know. I've got a friend that uh, used to be in Dunedin. The reason I said he used to be in Dunedin is because he's now passed away, but he used to be in Dunedin. And his wife... Uh, they were pastoring a church. His wife had a brother who was always anti-God. And every time they tried to tell him, yeah, it's not, it's, it's, it's not too bad if you just said, I'm not coming. He was just angry, uh, difficult to deal with. And they, they do that to him every, every Sunday and every Wednesday night. They have a Wednesday night service. Every Wednesday and Sunday. They asked him, the last Wednesday they asked him, and they just, just put on his helmet, got on his bike, went to his uh, beer haunt with his friend. Never got there, and they didn't take the helmet off because his head would have come to pieces if they took the helmet off. You say, did God do that? No. The devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Jesus came to give us life and life more abundantly. Now, if you're here today, I want to give your life to the Lord. Would you come? Anyone? All right. Secondly, if you're living here, you want to move here. Some people live in Wanganui and they decided to go and live somewhere else. Same thing. You, you want to leave Egypt and live in the wilderness. 
Maybe you're in the wilderness and you want to leave there and live in the promise. If that's you, I want you to stand to your feet where you're sitting. <coughs> Hallelujah. Thank you for your honesty. Let me pray for us. I'm standing. I need to shift. Bible says we go from glory to glory. God never wants us to stay in one place. God continues, continuously take us on. Hallelujah. From one glory to another. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray for your children those who are standing on their feet to acknowledge and let heaven know that they've heard you today. And Father, I pray for those that still live in the bondage of Egypt even though they are washed by your blood. I pray, dear God, today that there will be a decision of faith to move. And thank you for that, Lord God, that we can take one step and you will take a million step to see us move. And those in the wilderness that want to live in the promises of God, those precious, exceedingly great and precious promises that are given to us, Lord God, that we may be partakers of the divine nature and live, Lord God, in the fulfillment of your promises. You warned us to be afraid, lest the promises given to us don't come to pass because of our lack of participation. And Father, I thank you for your church. Thank you for your people. Thank you for each one standing for the decision that they have made today. Lord, that they will never be the same again. That they will walk with you. They will be as close to you as they could be that in every season they will walk with you in the intimacy, Lord God, of your grace and the depths of your love. So we thank you today in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Maybe you can just pray your own prayer under your own breath. You don't have to shout out, but tell God, I'm standing because I'm shifting. Hallelujah. Give me shoes, preparation of the gospel of peace, that I will continue to shift from glory to glory until that great day when I see you face to face. We bless you today. You're a wonderful, wonderful Savior. You're a mighty God. In Jesus' name. And everyone say, Amen. We'll see you tonight for the AGM. But before tonight, have a cup of tea. <laughs>